Hi, my name is Neil Franklin. I'm a 33-year law enforcement veteran from the state of Maryland. Twelve years ago, tragedy struck my inner circle. A close friend, Ed Totley, an undercover agent for the Maryland State Police, was gunned down by a drug dealer. He was making an undercover buy while working with the FBI on a task force in Washington, D.C. And that drug dealer shot my friend, Ed Totley, at point blank range in the side of the head. I'm a retired major from the Maryland State Police, a former colonel with the Baltimore Police Department. Spent most of my career in narcotics enforcement, working undercover and commanding multi-jurisdictional drug task force. Law Enforcement Against Prohibition is an organization of law enforcement professionals who have spent their careers fighting in the war on drugs. Formed in 2002 by five cops. What they saw was a correlation between our current drug war and alcohol prohibition in the 1920s here in the U.S. They saw the violence that we had with alcohol prohibition back in the 1920s. Gangsters landed their contraband spirits from offshore islands just outside American waters. Soon almost as much liquor was being smuggled into America as had been imported legally before prohibition. Rum running became the major business of Caribbean ports as gangsters financed the bootleg armada. Smugglers and coast guards were often killed in battles at sea, but a few gunships could not stop the rum runners beating prohibition. Now that the ice has disappeared, the U.S. Customs Patrol fleet starts its annual game of hide and seek with rum, dope, alien, or what have Despite you the coast guard, the rum runners flooded America's cities with Canadian beer and whiskey. In Chicago, Prohibition made organized crime richer and more powerful than ever. Two times in United States history was the murder rate extremely high. That was the first time, alcohol prohibition. The second time we are living it with the prohibition of drugs. Seeing that correlation, they decided to form the organization Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, which now has thousands of police officers, judges, corrections officials, criminal prosecutors and federal agents who believe that we need to end this disastrous policy, the worst social policy, most destructive social policy since slavery in this country. And we have come together to end it. An organization of 3,000 criminal justice professionals who give personal testimony that the war on drugs is a failure. And so we're working to end the war on drugs by educating the people as to exactly why it's a failure. And people need to realize that under our current policies of prohibition, that drugs are more readily available to our children. Not only are they readily available to our children because drug dealers do not ask for identification. They not only sell drugs to our kids, but they recruit our kids into the business, the very violent business of the illicit drug trade. Because of that, we have more drugs, more deadly drugs, not regulated, not controlled, no quality standards, on our streets in every neighborhood being sold on every corner. In Mexico, where over the past five to six years, we've had over 60,000 murders, 10,000 still missing. In the United States, where we have murders as we speak and stand here right now in some of our impoverished communities, people being arrested for marijuana violations as we speak, mandatory sentencing for nonviolent drug crimes, people missing from their families, orphans being made on both sides of the border. You do not escape this. The war on drugs, our policies of prohibition do affect you. They do reach you. They reach you financially. They reach you uh, through health. They reach you through insurance costs. They reach you through violence, whether your car is broken into, your house is burglarized because someone is trying to finance an unmanaged addiction. We should take the example of tobacco. Tobacco is probably one of the most harmful drugs on the face of the earth. But we're not putting people in jail who use tobacco. In the United States, we recently taxed tobacco so that we could use tax money to educate the public rather than jail the public on the harms of tobacco. And the result of that education has been a 20% reduction in tobacco use. Well, the solution is basically to take it out of the criminal justice realm and put it into the health realm. This is a health issue, not one of criminal justice. We shouldn't be sending people to prison because they have an addiction issue. They need doctors treating them for their addiction. No one escapes these failed policies, including you.